different story. I need to take you to Israel to someone who is really, really good with a sling, and you'll realize just how deadly a sling is. They'll kill you. And the Benjamites were the best with a the sling. They were left-handed, and they were the best with a the sling. Well, David is good with a sling, too, and he, he defeats Goliath. And then the women started singing, Saul has killed his thousands, David his tens of thousands. And that brought on an incredible jealousy in Saul's heart. And Saul became suspicious of David, and Saul started to hunt down David to kill him and said, what else is left for him but the kingdom? And so that's where we have a number of supplemental books coming in, like the Psalms are written in the context of Samuel, First and Second Samuel, written by David, many of them, running from Saul, his enemy. Read the Psalms in their context, and they'll come, up, they'll come alive. David's job as the second king was to, build the, or was to uh, expand the kingdom. Saul united the kingdom, and he reigned for 40 years. David expands the kingdom, and he reigns for 40 years. And the most important thing to remember out of this period, if you don't take anything else out of this period, take this. In 2 Samuel, in 2 Samuel chapter 7, that's the key chapter. Why? Because in that chapter, God does something special with David. What is it? He makes a covenant with David. And that covenant, some of the language you can read about in that chapter is, he says, like for example in verse 9, I will make you a great name, David. That's the dynasty we've been looking for, the royal dynasty. The whole chapter is filled with this. Verse 13, verse 12, verse 16, uh, verse 23, and on. God is going to build a house for David, a dynasty for David. And he said to David, he said that uh, in verse 16, And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. So what happens in 2 Samuel 7 is the one holy kingdom, the royal dynasty, is established. Now what does that mean? That means that from here on out, in the story, from here on out, somebody will be on the throne from the family of David. Somebody will. Could have gone to Saul, but now it's David. Someone will be on the throne forever. And this all started off because David said, you know, Lord, I want to build you a house, a permanent temple in Jerusalem. And God said, no, you're not going to build it. You're a man of warfare, but your son will build it. And I will build you a house. And that's a dynasty. So David is the one who expands the kingdom, but then who's David's son? Solomon. Solomon is the first in line now in the royal kingdom to be on the throne. And Solomon is known for Proverbs, Song of Solomon. He's, he wrote these tremendous Proverbs. He's a very wise man. But Solomon disobeys the Lord. And the Lord had said in Deuteronomy through Moses that a king shall not have many horses, he shall not have much gold, and shall not have many wives. Solomon ended up with 700 wives, 300 concubines. He had many, many horses and chariots, and guess how much gold and silver? 666 talents, which is the sign of a tyrant, a beast. 666. And the scriptures tell us in Kings that that Solomon's heart was turned to the Lord. We've moved from 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel. 1 Kings chapter 11 tells us that Solomon's heart was turned away from the Lord and he became uh, really a ruin, a disaster at the end. And that leaves us with the next period, the divided kingdom. What will the people do with this royal kingdom that is letting them down, taking their children, taxing them? What will they do? We'll see that in the very next period as we begin to move into 1 Kings chapter 12 and beyond, the black bead. That will be our next period, the divided kingdom. God bless.